Hello, good morning. Thanks for joining me in my shop. Now, uh, wow, I got a lot of things to say, but I don't want to spend a lot of time talking here, but thanks so much for uh, comments and emails on this radio. Uh, if you watch a lot of my videos, you know I'm hot and cold on comments. This particular radio is complex enough, and this is not a uh, for fun project as such. I mean, yeah, I'm going to have fun with it. Somebody owns this radio and they want it back working well. So because I'm, how can I not be, I'm over my head to some degree with this radio, even though this is probably the tenth radio of this type that I've worked on. Yes, I have to admit to that. Uh, um, I, I, I can still benefit from some help. Now, talking about help, look at this rough sheet of paper sent to me by a person. I, I'll just avoid saying people's names out here. Um, this is his English translation of the German instructions for aligning this radio. So, thank you so much. You know who you are. You, you often uh, help me out. It's great. It's fantastic. In fact. I have this long winded description. I think I showed on the last video that I found on the internet. I've gone through this a couple times now to try to absorb it. Uh, fantastic. I think the technician who did this is definitely a pretty firm step ahead of where I am. By the way, if, if you're confused and you think in my videos I'm showing you how to do things, no. <laughs> I, I might be showing you a way to do things, uh, but this isn't necessarily the best way or the right way or the fastest way or the most efficient way. But what I am trying to get to is the most fun way, the most uh, non-depressing, would that be the right word? The most non-depressing way for me to continue pummeling a radio like this. Uh, in, in, in and make very small incremental steps forward but still be motivated enough to keep going or even make no steps going forward or worse yet have things go the wrong way have things go south a lot of what goes on in my shop is in the terms of the approach that I take is about me motivating myself keeping myself interested trying to inject some fun into the process and stuff like that so uh, that's that's what's going on uh, I, I don't do things the way I do them in order to create really good videos. It's, I'm, I'm really, <laughs> really, really kind of thoughtless about the video side of things. Uh, you can see from my my lack of editing and stuff like that. But uh, okay, now I'm just going to ramble on. So let's let's see. Today's goal is to repeat the tests of yesterday in a different style and a different technique in order to provide an answer to this question. Did the way I tested this radio result in the results? Uh, that's a bad way of saying it. If the way I hooked up my SDR radio could have disturbed the tuned circuits in this radio. I don't think so because I looked carefully on the schematic and I chose the place where I connected the SDR. And I was doing that with the radio off, right? So I can't be on the other side of any tubes. I'm, I'm trapped in the front end of the radio with the radio switched off. So uh, now, if I plug that tube back in, here it is here, ECH81, and get on the output of this tube, that's what I'm, and it's, it's not an if, that's what I intend on doing. Get on the output of that tube on the plate circuit, which is much lower impedance, the grid side of it is very high impedance, so a little disturbance in a high impedance circuit makes a big difference. We'll get on the other side of the tube. Now on the other side of the tube, things get a little more complicated because coming out of that tube is everything that's going into it. So that would be all the antenna signals going right through that tube, coming out on the plate. The single local oscillator frequency going through that tube and coming out on the plate. And then the mixture of the local oscillator and all the signals coming in on the antenna, the difference and the sum, sum and the difference frequencies are coming out too. And that will include uh, frequencies all across the spectrum just just basically the AM band gets shifted by the local oscillator and then the IF can only see a little piece at the 455 kilohertz uh, or 460 in this radio 460 piece that's how radios work so on the output of the mixer tube uh, this tube has different names in different parts of the world this, this function of that tube but here we like to call it a mixer tube because it's mixing the antenna and the local oscillator together. 
some, some people call this a frequency shifting tube. Um, it's really a frequency shifting circuit. This is just a tube like any other, really. So, uh, what was I saying? I don't know. Somebody help me out here. Where's the producer? Where? <laughs> I need one of those little things in my ear that somebody can talk to me and go, Jim, you're, you're rambling. You're rambling, man. Uh, see, I'm a little wound up. I got two cups of coffee in me already. Wow. Sunny day. <laughs> what am I doing in my shop? So how am I going to get a signal into my SDR without throwing this radio off? I, mean, I got two approaches. One is a padded connection to the plate circuit of the mixer tube, which again is a low impedance circuit. I can probably tap off enough signal. doesn't take much, right, to go into the front end of, of a radio like an SDR radio. Tap a little off there, not disturb the radio, at least the front end. Maybe what happens afterwards continuing on through the IF. Maybe that's throwing off, but who cares? Because we don't really not really paying attention to that so much right now. That would isolate the SDR, the low impedance of the SDR input from the high impedance circuits that I'm trying to, to test. And you know what? I think it's 50-50. I, I think there's a chance when I do this next test, the result will be that there's no problem in the front end. Now, now that would run against the fact that the radio doesn't receive anything in AM. So there's a reason for that, and that's what I'm really looking for. So, And number two, another approach, aside from the direct connection, is to utilize a little coil. And I happen to have some here somewhere, which, uh, which, uh, which, 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 which I can't find at the moment, but I'm not going to use them initially. Initially, I'm going to try to leak off a little bit of signal off the plate circuit. Oh, this is my third cup of coffee here, so danger, everybody. Now, 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 now. So, I could have been doing stuff while I'm talking. But, let's just put the power cord back here. So, uh, to pick it up off the plate, first I'm going to put this tube in before I forget to do that. So to some degree, when I'm using the SDR, I, I'm experimenting with the SDR as an instrument. And I've done a couple of videos when early on when I first got this idea that I might be able to utilize it. I, I really focused on trying to use it. Man, I'm all over the map with it because uh, I'm, I'm experimenting and I'm kind of learning the learning by doing on how to utilize it. And, and I've had great success with one thing in particular, and that's spotting the local oscillator. Here's the brakes on this. And I've also had some luck at uh, looking at what's going through the IF, at whatever the IF frequency is. And I've had some luck, like I've had with this radio, seeing the front end tuning peak. Um, now, and another thing I can do, instead of you know relying on just noise going into the uh, back of the radio, I could send in a sweep signal from the sweep signal generator and just sweep the man very, very quickly and uh, that that can also show us some stuff. So I got lots of things here I can try. But the first one is direct connection off the plate. So I just want to make sure this is good and stable. It's not bad. And I really want to take the strain off here because every time I turn around, this is rotating. There. That's what I did. Just a hold in the wires. Going to the speakers that are right here. So I guess I'm going to have to figure out uh, whoop, up here which which connection is the plate. Now this is so this is on the grid. I'm going to take that off, and then we've got to find the plate circuit. And I think I'm going to stick a big resistor in there. Now, somewhere I've got, I've already got what I need. Here it is. Oh, there's quite a connection there. This isn't quite it. This is just the capacitor. I have one of these with a resistor on it. Laying around here. Oh, my shop's become a bit of a mess. And the answer is I can't find it right away. That's okay. 
That's okay. We, we can handle this. So I'm going to use a capacitor, of course. I want to block the high voltage uh, that's on the plate from getting to my SDR, or that will be the end of the SDR. These SDR radios are cheap enough that if you blow one up, just buy another. They're that cheap. Twenty. I think I paid 25 bucks for this thing. Software was free. That's the that's the best dollar instrument ratio you can come up with, I think. Now, okay, so I'll just grab a mega ohm. I'm going to grab a mega ohm resistor here. Yeah, I'm going to have to take some time and clean up my shop. Mega ohm, mega ohm. What's a mega ohm? A mega ohm is. Uh, Green third band, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's pretty pigment. Now, do I want to have long drooping um, clip leads coming out of here? Well, you know, I can actually use this to start with. Oh, I gotta know what the plate is. What number is the plate? Okay, I'm gonna peek at the schematic here. I'm going to look at the ECH, and of course, there's two plates. Two plates. There's two plates. Here, I'm going to put this on the screen. Hang on one sec. Okay, so we're looking at this tube, this one here. Let me zoom in. If you're looking at this on a small screen, I, I, I realize you're going to have trouble. Don't be looking at my videos on a small screen. So, let's see. So, this is where I was connected. And my reasoning here was uh, this capacitor would probably somehow protect my SDR from, you know, when I look at this now, it's a kind of a stupid notion. Because, look, here's some trimmers right here. Always connected. So, you know, maybe if I fooled with the uh, electrical parameters of this point in the radio, and I'm, I'm really throwing this off. That could be all I was seeing the whole time, but there has to be an explanation for why this radio doesn't receive. Now, what are they doing with this? 80 volts there, 210 on this line. And I've got this line shielded. Isn't This is the one I'd be interested in, isn't it? Let me go up, 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 up. Some, okay, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Some, somehow the signal from here has to get to the grid of this tube. The, the yeah, the, the whole signal package gets to, the, I can look at the grid on this tube. Now that, that's already, that's not so good. That's past one set of IF coils. So, you know, here all I'm going to get is the IF signal. I'm not interested in that right now. I want to know what's coming out of this. I want to know what these circuits are doing to the front end tuning. Now, what's this guy? Why, why? Why, 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 why? So, 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 uh, I don't know, maybe one or not that one. Maybe a bit more. What about this one here? So, usually a trial is just for amplifying stuff. Amplifying it. it looks like it's going back. You know, maybe in certain bands this amplifier is kicked in. Maybe this is used on the short wave bands or something like that. Maybe that's what's happening here. So, okay, I'm going to go on that assumption, even though it might be totally wrong. But uh, normal AM radio is coming straight to the grid of the mixer, but you flip the short wave, somehow they take the signal jam it around here, somehow it goes up here, somehow it comes back around and then makes its way up to this grid and then carries on. So that's my guess on that. So what else would they be doing with this? So I got to get on this circuit. Where? Right, right on the top of the plate would be the best place, I think. Um, I don't want to get on the other side of these coils or I will have knocked off the stuff I want to see. It won't make it over here. So all, I, all I'm limited to really is just this line. That's number six on this box of coils, or number zero. 
And what about right up there? Now, see, these things might be hard to find in the radio. That's a 1K, so not much loss across there. And you're up in the, what looks like a B plus deal. Yeah, B plus. B plus, right through there. Oh, that's interesting then. When this switch is thrown, Yeah, I'm not going to say that. I was going to say, when the switch is thrown the right way, you power up this plate. I don't know about that. I'm going to analyze these switches. So where are we going to go? Well, the easiest place to find is pin 6 on this tube. So let's do that. We'll just do that. Pin 6 on this tube. Uh, okay. Pin 6 on this tube. So count them out here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let me take a really close look at that. I don't want to short out a plate while you're doing this. It's going to get pulled down when I hook up wires to it. It's pretty, pretty strong. Okay. That would be pin 6. Now I want to stick on the 1 meg resistor. scary as it may be and we'll hook up my uh, SDR antenna when the time comes. Where is it now? It's hanging here. Let's unhang it. This would be a signal to the chassis still so let me get a nice chassis connection spot. There's a good one right there. It's actually a grounding strap going to this board from the chassis. Then we're going to want to do that. Before I do that though else do I need to get going? So we're going to try the uh, sweep generator in a bit. We're going to go on the noise basis because uh, there's so much noise. You know, learn to love it. How I learn to love the noise helps me in my testing. And I see my meter here is falling over and it's laying unconscious. Let's get him ready just in case. Up shop. Hey, stuff goes on in this shop in the evening, you know. <laughs> that's, where the, that's where the mess has come. Right? My little meter holder is not so hot here. He needs a few adjustments. Okay. We'll switch on the radio like this and uh, verify that we're on the plate here, which is just a wee bit tricky. I've covered up the whole connection there. All I got is the other side of the capacitor to get at. I'll stick a prod down in there. Uh, how else can we be sure that's the plate? Count it again. That, that would help. Count it backwards. Nine. Nine. Eight. Seven. I got seven. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Son of a gun. I got it on seven. Wow. Mistakes everywhere. Now, is it on seven? Because it's supposed to be on seven, and somehow I got six in my head incorrectly. That's pretty loose and flimsy. I might have to solder a little wire out of there. I'm not happy with this. <laughs> Can't be too happy with that. No, it's just you know, it's 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 a plate, right? solder this one megaohm resistor sticking out of there.
just waiting for the soldering iron to get up to where it's going. 357 degrees. Now I'm just going to tack this in a little bit of fresh solder, it usually helps. Make sure I'm on six now. Well, I never checked to make sure six was the pin. It's got a yellow wire going to it. Doesn't seem quite quite right. Okay, so soldering iron held in the air while I take a quick peek and just make sure it is six. Yeah, six. Six on the pin toad. I think it's a pin toad. as opposed to the dry oat. A lot of bare wire in there now. I should have really put some uh, put something on there. Wow. Okay. So now at the end of that I want to stick this capacitor. of that SDR antenna input. I think we're almost there. Noise on the antenna, that's all I need. We're on the broadcast band. Volume is up 15%. Okay. Just keep an eye on those dim lights here. What happened? Nothing happened. What, 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 what happened there? The light should have come on. What happened? <laughs> it's my old standby mistake. And the power is switched off right now. Let's turn off the master power too. That'll help. Hey, fixed it. Okay. There we go this time. You just watch the general boost in lighting behind the radio. There it goes. Perfect. Now a smart person would put a scope on that before putting on their SDR. Are there any smart people around here for crying out loud? Cats are outside. Um, Oh, what's that? Well, sounds like a radio going here. Lots of volume. There's something wrong with this radio. It seems to be working. Remember, it picks up noise. Hey, listen to that. So there's a signal underneath the noise. Certain, hear that. So I, I think there's some... <sighs> My ears fool me all the time when I'm listening to short wave and all I, all I got on the radio is a hiss. I swear there's voices in it. <laughs> I better go, I'm gonna go see the doctor about that. Well, we heard a little bit. We heard a little bit. It's probably a fairly strong broadcast station. And, uh, you know, that just adds in to the whole theory that the front end is not aligning right. So that the uh, frequency which you want to be resonating in the front of the radio so it comes screaming out the speaker is not resonating in the front of the radio. Some noise area is doing the resonating. And just a little bit of that broadcast signal is leaking through. Kind of reassuring to hear a little bit out of it, though. Uh, I was I going to do something with a scope here. I'm not really set up to do this uh, easily. Let's...
try. Uh, I got trouble on both my scopes. I think maybe maybe if I get this this light out of the camera's view too, that might be a good idea. I think if I just bring the camera over here, there's the scope. What are we hoping to see? What kind of voltage is there before I pop my SDR? Oh, this is really not. And I just stick a voltmeter on there. So that's an uh, audio uh, meter uh, I use, this one here. I think this is good for one megahertz. I have another laboratory quality uh, audio meter, which I don't have on my bench right now. It's a newer model than this, and it's good for 10, 10 megahertz. I just put it on there and read the voltage. I'm not going to. Just running through all my options here. So this is really awkward. Can't do anything with my left hand. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the video here. I gotta stop it. And uh, yeah, get everything set up and going here because this is gonna take a bit. Uh, let's get them playing. And what the 903 megahertz? That's a little bit high. <laughs> I don't know why it wanted to start up there, but that's a little high for us for what we're doing. There. So here's the medium wave area. Looks, you know, I've seen this enough times now. In my shop, I always see this thing. This this thing here. This is probably one of the lights in the shop. Okay, not to get too distracted here. And I turn on and on, let's try this one here. No, no. Okay, so there's all kinds of stuff it could be. And don't forget, Jim. Jim, you can't see what's going on. So I <laughs> have to flip back here for a minute. A bit of video production nonsense here. Okay, I'm putting on my, my own big screen TV. See, I have a big screen TV up there coming on. And pop. And if I just click this. That was the wrong thing to click. Okay, if I click this, there we are. See, so now I can watch what you can see on that screen. And meanwhile, back here, no, that's not right. Ooh, oh, ooh, ooh. Meanwhile, back here on my regular hooter, I'm showing you how I do this. I see all the camera views and can mix them and select them and stuff like that. Just to, just to let you, you know, no, no secrets here. No secrets. Um, one secret is, well, what am I doing? It's become a secret to me. We're close to hooking up the SDR. So I want the SDR on the screen. There we go. Okay, now check the SDR. You can't, you can't see the radio now, so I'm touching with my finger the SDR antenna lead. You can see, okay, clearly it's working. All that stuff you see there, more, virtually all of it is noise crap in my house. Probably not much different anywhere. Okay, so I'm going to hook it up to where the scope is hooked up. God help us all. Okay, it's on there. So, see that orange line coming down? I'll bet you 99 pennies that that is the local oscill here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tune the radio slightly and we'll see if that orange line moves around again. Yes, it does. So that's not where the radio is tuned. That's the local oscillator traveling up there. So let's set it to a particular, let's set it, we'll set the, this is the best way to do this. We set the local oscillator to a million because my arithmetic is so poor. We get it set to one million, the math all becomes easy. So we have a 460 kilohertz IF. So the local oscillator is designed to be running 460 kilohertz above. I'm sure it's above the signal you're actually trying to receive. So um, subtract 460 from 1 million, 540. Wow, right at the bottom of the AM band. 540. Now, is that really true? Here comes the moment of truth here. 
540. I don't know if I want to rotate the radio, so let, let's look with the other camera. It's a little awkward for me. i got to kind of reach around the back here. Untangle a, a mass of wires. Got my backup drive down here on the floor. And everything's all tangled up. Okay, I can't untangle it, so I'll leave it. Yeah, I have a backup drive because I fill the hard drive on my regular computer regularly, and I have to. Okay, let's find it. We're supposed to be 540. 540. Look at that. Right on 540. Okay, not to be too surprised here because the local oscillator uh, during the other alignment activity proved to be pretty accurate. Dead on 540. So we know the local oscillator and the dial are lined up just the way they should be. Question is, is the front end too? Now, uh, what were one? SDR. Back to the SDR. SDR, there's just, just so much going on here. So the question is now, where is the front end tuning? Uh, you don't see any hint of it, you know. It should be something right. Let me move this out of the way here. It should be something right, right down, and right in here. Uh, oh, is that it right there? Okay, so if I if I tune the radio, uh, that thing would move if it's part of the radio's tuning system. The thing right beside the red line. No, it's not going anywhere back to a million. You know, I'm still doing this on uh, partial voltage. When we get serious about aligning things, I'll, I'll put the radio on full. So we can't really see the front end. So the next, the next step along the way is to engage the sweep generator and we'll stop trying to utilize noise and we'll pump in a controlled signal here. It's a controlled signal in my outer control shop. Um, sweep out, main out, I need another cord. I've got so many connections here. Hang on one sec. It's right. And I got another cord. I'm running really low. I got one with lousy. Okay, put this on the output. generator here. I don't want to move my equipment all over the place yet. Here, reaching in front of the camera. Okay, okay, I didn't, I didn't set this up, so I'm going to continue here on uh, Okay, now, any luck, it's, it's set right now to sweep. I'm going to stop the video again and sort this out. Just take a couple of minutes. Anyway. Ready or not, here I come. Okay, so on the end of this cable now is the output of the sweep generator producing a signal that starts just below the AM band and finishes just above the AM band and sweeps through it. If it sweeps through it, let's see. Uh, I've got it set to, it's ripping through it at a high rate right now. So we're going to try to feed this into the antenna. Get rid of our noisemaker here. Pretty sure this is a low output. Let's take a look at the SDR here. Just one second. I'm just going to peek at it myself just to make sure. Yeah, everything is everything is as it should be. Uh, the signal noise signal level has dropped off. Uh, these are horrible connectors, but I think I can get away with it here. One to ground. 
The other one, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna use the cliff lead here. I have to get rid of this later. Uh, what are we looking at? We're looking at the scope. Okay, we should we should start hearing. There. Now that's the sound of the sweep generator zooming through the radio. I'll slow it down. You start hearing it. Oop! That didn't work well. Hear the thumping? I'll slow it down even more. Turn up its amplitude here. Okay, so that's that's the sweep sweeping across the tuned point on this radio. And each time it's just resulting in that knocking sound if you like. But when it's going full tilt, it sounds like this. Which we don't really need to listen to. I'm not relying on this meter at all. It's not even switched on. We are relying on the SDR. So scope, scope, is that showing a little bit of a voltage there? No, no, I guess it just drifted up a bit. So it's still showing a zero. So one volt scale here, so there's nothing there. Good. I mean, if there was, my SDR would be done already because it's still connected. So let's go SDR looking. Hey, it's not looking good. Yeah, whew. sometimes the uh, SDR hangs up because the software is, you know, it's free software. It's being developed in that sort of communal type approach. Okay, so what do we see on here? I don't see any effect at all from the sweeping SDR. What we should see is th this thing, th this noise here shouldn't be so apparent and the whole signal should be up a bit. So I'm gonna change the output level of the sweep generator and we'll see if it does anything on the SDR. say this has not worked. Why, why would this not work? Let's slow it way down. Slow it way down. Turn it up. So it's sweeping through there once a second. We should see something happening every second. I'll slow it down even more. Ten seconds now to get across. Ten seconds a long time. I don't see a darn thing. Why has this failed to do what I imagined it was going to do? What have I got here that's wrong? I've got... I'm just looking everything over. I don't know why. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to just connect the output of the sweep generator directly to the SDR here. That's my finger. I'm going to turn down the output level here. Okay, we're going right on the output of the SDR, uh, the output of the sweep. Well, there you see it. Zooming along. Did I, I say top of the band or the bottom? I lied. It's from the bottom of the band to just above, right there, just above 1.1 megahertz just the way the band arrangement is on the sweep generator. It can't sweep the whole AM band. So why, uh... Notice the signal I'm putting in is pretty close to the noise level, eh? On that. Why is there so much noise there? And my, my long green clip lead is not helping the situation here. So I'm gonna try to get around the clip lead problem here think hard here before you make a mistake so off with the signal generator off with the SDR so the SDR what you see on the SDR right now is just it's just what it's able to pick up with its own lead wires uh, one second here I got that just a wee bit of a challenge putting it in the back of the radio antenna Oh, don't do that. Good. Just dropping stuff here. Go in there. Perfect. Okay, so I'm just putting in a, a clip, a, a pin rather, that I can clip to. 
And we're now going to connect. What am I doing here? I'm connecting the. That's stupid. I'm going to connect the SDR to the. Uh, what the heck am I doing? I'm totally lost. Getting rid of the clip lead. That's right. The coffee must be wearing out. Okay, so sweep generator connected to the antenna. No clip lead now. And I'm going to put the SDR back on the plate. There we go. We're on. Where's the sweepy? Where's the sweep thing? Where'd it go? Oh yeah, okay, so we're not looking at the actual signal. Uh, I'm, what you're seeing on the SDR is the output of the plate. Get it right, Jim. And we're still sweeping at a slow rate. I'm going to make it one second because it's just a little easier to see. So at this point in the uh, radio, the only thing that's important to the radio is the uh, 460 IF frequency. Everything else is kind of junk at this point on the plate side of the mixer tube. This radio, maybe it's getting rid of all that junk. We can't see it. But interestingly enough, we should see something down at 460 in here. I didn't see anything there either. Why, why, why? Okay, I'm going to turn up the output on the sweep. Way up, way up. Okay, that's interesting now. That's quite interesting. Okay, so you see the dots to the left of the red line. Where'd they go? They were there a minute ago. They're disappearing off the bottom of the waterfall. There they are. Okay, not to worry about why they fade in and out. That dot is occurring in the IF frequency. So that's occurring at 460 right in here. If I put these right on the right on them. You can see it like it says 460. And we have 463. And that represents the sweep signal passing the tuned point of the radio, which has been left at oh we're way down at the bottom here. Let, let me move it up. Okay, so we're under the civil defense symbol at 640. So you see the, the IF produces the same pop, but it's not actually the same pop. It's actually as the sweep sweeps by the new tuned point, which is now, yeah, 640, I forgot. So what's happening at 640? There's a little peak there. It doesn't look like 640 though. 620, 640 would be over here. How come we're getting a wop wop now? The sweep generator is not the smartest instrument in the world. It sweeps from the bottom of the band up and then it doesn't turn off and sweep back quickly and then come across again. All it does is it sweeps according to the speed I set it forward and then it shoots back maximum speed to here and then sweeps again. So those trips back go right through the tune point and can produce another pip. Sounds like a heartbeat kind of. Tick bump, tick bump. It's just possible the tick is actually the return. Well, let me put it on fast. Here, faster. Let me go full blast. Okay, we don't need to listen to it. So now you see this bump in the IF. That is actually what is making it past the plate, if you like, and my connections to it to go on into the radio, right here. That's what the radio is really listening to. We can make the SDR listen to it. Should sound the very same. More volume here on the SDR. 
sounds pretty much the same, doesn't it? It is the same. It, 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 essentially, at this point, what I'm doing here is kind of crazy. I'm stealing the IF intended signal out of the... Uh, I'm sharing a little bit of it. I'm sampling. So sampling the IF signal and uh, shoving it through another radio with all the same stuff. Well, SDRs actually don't have all the same stuff in them. They, they work quite differently. One thing about using uh, another radio like an SDR is it has its own automatic volume control which or level control which will really interfere with these tests. But this is not working out here. This is, this is not... Unless I can spot the front end tuning. I need to go back to noise, just noise. Let me go back to noise. Okay. Sweep out of there. Okay, so I've disconnected the sweep. We're already seeing some noise. But let's make it noisier. Hey, what's happened? How come that's not showing a response? What I'm doing is I'm touching the antenna lead. They should be jumping up and down like crazy there. Oh my god, are these buttons bothering me? Okay, I'm going to put... I've left the buttons alone on this radio to this moment. So I'm going to touch the band button. Luckily, nothing seen. No change. Is that lucky? Let's put this radio on full voltage here. <laughs> you see the uh, local oscillator has increased its strength. Uh, see where it is? That wiggly red line. So the local oscillator is coming out of this tube. Um, but it's, it's not required at this point in the radio, so it's coming out and being ignored because the IF is only sensitive, the radio is only sensitive after this point to what's going on at 460. The rest of it, you can't hear. Why, uh, why, 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 More noise is, uh, more noise, we need more noise. You know what, Th there's something to happen to the radio. I'm going to guess my antenna connection never actually connected. I shoved a pin into the antenna connector and maybe that pin didn't make contact. And I don't want to rotate. I don't want to rotate it. That's did I shove it in the wrong hole? Now, this should sorry about the focus there. It should cause quite a jump on the SDR. On the SDR. See, that's the thing I dropped. I gotta get the SDR on my screen over here. You can't see it, but I can. Why is it? Yeah, you know what? This is not making contact. This is the problem. Oh, you, you, you troublesome radio, you. Why don't I just shove a wire in there? the problem. Get things mixed up in my head, no? Sorry about the focus on everything again. It appears to be, this radio appears to have gone dead. Why? No, wait a minute, how can it be dead? I didn't sound dead. Wow, it sounds full of life. There isn't even any antenna connected. That loop antenna hasn't come to life, has it? Reaching around blindly behind the radio is not a wise idea. Well, huh. well what's the problem with making the antenna connection here? 
Hmm. Let me take a closer look at it. are embedded in it. So I'm coming around the back and, and just clipping onto those uh, leads there. Why, why can't I go? Ah, there's a great big clip inside that hole there. But this is the hole I'm shoving the... We'll have to clip around the back. But I, I, I get the distinct feeling something has happened here. Even though the radio is making lots of sound. A lot of that sound could be all these wires are actually, they're injecting crap into the radio. It may not be coming from the front end. Is that what's happened? Apparently not. For some reason, just sticking this pin into that holder just doesn't make connections. Doesn't make a connection. Uh, what am I doing now? I'm going back to shoving the sweep. No, oh, I was going to use noise. Noise, noise, noise. Knives, knives, knives. Got the noise we wanted. What's it look like? Okay, so we're, we're back to the world of noise here. And I'll switch the uh, sweep. Whatever, what happened to the sweep generator? Did I shut it off? It's still running. What happened to it? I disconnected it. Wake up, Chuck. Must be on the time to get outside, I think. Uh, well, I don't think this is showing us anything. Can I tune the radio? Well, you know what? You know what it could be? It could be that I'm looking for a problem with the front end tuning. Maybe there is no front end tuning, really. And by the time the signal makes it all the way here, it's just really nothing much left of it. Or really, what we're looking at here is what the radio is capable of receiving right now, which is nothing but noise. As I tune, tune the uh, tune it. Remember now, the peak that I'm moving is not where the radio is tuned. It's 460 kilohertz above. So if we go to 1460, 1460, something like that. Let's see. Yeah, we're going to get to 1460. Now the radio is tuned exactly to 1 megahertz. I see a little noise peak there. And I think that's the shrill thing we can hear. Tune the radio just a touch. We'll get right on top of it. There are things moving around down there. Okay, so now another problem with using an SDR that I've discovered is you see all the wiggly lines that are... I don't know what those are exactly. And I don't think they're important in what I'm trying to do. Let's put it back to 1460. 14... Okay, so that's about 1460. And now I'm lining up on a million. I don't, I don't know what those other two peaks are. I think they're just aberrations in the uh, test process. Son of a gun. So I'm struggling to just to see the front end here. It's not happening. One more attempt with a signal uh, sweeper, sweep signal generator. On the antenna. There you can hear it. It doesn't seem to produce much of anything. We can hear it. It's got to be in the IF. 
if we can hear it. Okay, okay, cranked up the output full. Now you get a real good look at the IF down here. It's interesting. As, as I tune the radio, as I move the local oscillator, the tuning window is moving around down here. Whatever it encounters in the tuning window shows up over here. Let's see if I can demonstrate that. That's really tricky to do in this arrangement since I can't... Well, let's try it. So, first I'm going to move the local oscillator and watch what's going on in the IF. You'll see stuff kind of rolling through it. Just, just the IF. Okay, so we just tuned outside of the sweep generator. That's why it went away. That demonstration's pretty crappy. Hey, look at how much bigger it's getting. Okay, that's the end of the local oscillator travel. It just won't go much below a million because if you subtract a million, uh, if you subtract 460 from a million, you're right at the bottom of the AM band. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? If you set it on 1 million, the radio, you set the local oscillator on 1 million, this radio tunes exactly to the bottom frequency. And maybe that's why they use 460 instead of 455. Who knows? Well, it's been a complete flop. Um, unless we can see this thing in the front end. Or is that it there? Is that it? Ah, I can see it. I can see it. My gosh, I can see it. Okay, so if you look at the 500k line and you look up, you see to the left of it a tall peak. Ignore that. To the right of it, you see a lower kind of a peak just almost barely above the noise. I'm going to tune the radio and watch that thing. Look at it move. And I'd say it's right on the 600 at this point. But it's very poor. You know what? I think this is the problem. The fact that I can't see this at this point I think is the problem. So, we have an opportunity here. We look at the local oscillator frequency. We measure it rather exactly. 1066. That's an important year in history, isn't it? Let's say 1060 for easy calculating. 1060, well that's easy. Minus 460 is 600. Hey, the peak is right on 600. <laughs> Where's the radio tuned? Where is the radio tuned? Okay, my guess is it's right on 600. This, this is unfortunate. I'm now proving there's nothing wrong with this radio here. Not quite 600, eh? I'm having trouble seeing it. Now there are some marks at the 5... What was it? 5, 5, 5 mark. Okay, let's let's tune the radio to the five 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 mark here. If I can get the camera held right. Where are the marks? There they are, right under the five. So there, so we're tuned to the five 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 mark. Now I'll go, I'll go back. Of course I wasn't watching the SDR during that. I'll go back to the SDR. So, I'm going to measure this very exactly. I'd say it's 110. Let's say, let's say it's a million and ten. A million and ten would be the same as a million minus 450. 550. It's really, really close. 550. 550. 5, 550 is here. So we got to look right here. I'm going to tune the radio back and forth and see if we can see a little peak moving. Here we go. Eyes on the screen there. I'll get my eyes on it. Right at 550. There we go. Back and forth. Back and forth. Well, you can see the local oscillator, so you know. 
I think there's something moving back and forth there. So I'm going to try to stick the thing that's moving. I can barely perceive. I think I have it on 600 there. Should I turn? You know what I gotta do? I gotta do at this point. I gotta, I gotta twiddle the, uh, twiddle the non-oscillator adjustment for this band and see if something doesn't happen. So I'm sticking a tool into that slug that's wandering and loose. Now I'm gonna turn this and maybe the peak will show up. Not that way. If I remember right, it was the other way with the slug almost falling out. Look, look, look at the IF is getting stronger. That's interesting too. That's really interesting. Why, why is the IF getting stronger? Look at that. Hmm. Let me tune it to the peak. I have to kind of think about this for a little bit. Why, why would this... Hasn't produced anything visible in the uh, around 600, but a good chance all I've done is adjusted the front end to find a strong noise signal. So now it's conveying a strong noise signal, not at the tuned frequency, just above or below it a little bit, firing it into the IF. Fascinating me, and that's about all there is to it. So let me tune the radio around again, back and forth. I don't see any dramatic peak moving around. We've got it right down at the bottom here. It seemed to show up a little better. So the change in the sound is probably because we're approaching the end of the sweep. Well, I can see it. Okay, so if you look at the medium wave blue bar right at the left end of it, right above it, the peak is sitting right there. I'm going to try again, moving it up to, to, to uh, well, let's measure it right there. We can, we can measure it right there. I think it's right here. On some radios, this peak is just jumping right out at you. 528. Okay, let's go take a look at where we're tuned. Well, let's, let's check it this way. We, we, we know the local oscillator is and the tuning dial are lined up. So that's 987 minus 460. Well, that's over my head. Nine eighty seven minus four sixty. I didn't do very good in grade three of arithmetic. 527, 527, uh, 528, that's where it is. So, so this is suggesting these things are lined up. If they're lined up now and they weren't on my test yesterday's video, my test yesterday threw the radio off. And I'm not surprised about that. I think what we're learning here is, again, the front end is just so weak. In, in this case, it's not that it's maybe misaligned. It's just not really there. It's just not, it's got no Q. It's got no, it's got no Q. Okay, I think I'm done for today here. Let me just get off this. And go outside with my kitties. I got all kinds of yard work to do and stuff like that. Better do it when it's sunny. So just to recap, all this fiddling around is suggesting the front end for AM has something going on that's drooping the signal way down. The signal's weakened way off. Seems to be true of short wave. I'm not absolutely sure of that. It seems to be true of short wave. And uh, so there's something in common between the shortwave AM band, some component, something going on that I could probably probably find.
I'm going to have to study the schematic and try to identify a couple of key candidates and problem causers and then either change them out if they're capacitors or resistors or, uh, or, or, or do some more testing with a, a better theory of, of the problem. I think that's it for today. So thanks so much for watching and I hope you're enjoying some sunshine too. And uh, yeah, I may get back in here later today. See ya.